Hi, today's little quickie is all about micrometers and we have before us here quite a spread. Now we have to my left here a small set of stick mics and we have some inside micrometers an imperial, a 0.2 to 1.2 inch and a 25 to 50 millimeter metric one. We have a three contact bore mic, uh, very accurate, and this one is a 25 to 30 millimeter uh, version. We have a panamic with its interchangeable handles, a special uh, measuring tools for special circumstances. We have to get into that small groove, we have something difficult to measure, sometimes that's the way to do it. We have our depth mic with its interchangeable uh, sticks, and at the bottom here, well, we have our standard micrometers, a one inch with a vernier scale, a one to two inch over here, and a uh, five to six inch version here. In the center here, well, we have our calibrating uh, sticks or blocks uh, for the different mics because mics need to be calibrated. What's surprising about this spread isn't the quality of tools. This is Starit and Mitotoyo top quality tooling. Uh, it's not the price either. I mean, there's a couple of thousand dollars worth of tools on this small workbench. Now, what's surprising is how easily they can be replaced by this $50 Matui 0 to 6 inch caliper that I bought some 40 years ago. Now this will do everything that what I have here will do and then some because this will do any measurement outside, inside and depth two ways from 0 to 6 inches or from 0 to 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters I should say. So this is quite uh, easy to use and can do many many things. Very versatile measuring tool. So why have all this when I can use this? It's a question of precision. With precision measurements there's what you can see and read on your tool and then there's the actual measurement. And those two things aren't always the same. As an example, let's take a look at this $20 Mastercraft uh, digital caliper. If I had a battery in it, because there isn't one, but if I had one, I could read to five ten thousandths of an inch. Now that's what I can read, but in reality that's not what I'm measuring. This type of tool that is long and flexible and that has a sliding anvil on it well needs to be loose up to a certain point to function and that impedes its precision. I would never trust a caliper, even a very good one, uh, with a measurement within a thousandth of an inch and generally I accept that between one and two thousandths of an inch is what I can expect to obtain as far as precision goes with this type of tool. Micrometers, however, span a very short distance and they're quite limited in their scope. And that means that they're really only made to measure one type of thing. If I take my standard 0 to 1 inch micrometer, well I can say that this micrometer is used for measuring outside dimensions only between 0 and 1 inch. That's all. That's all it's made for. It's short, stubby, rigid, okay, and has very little play in it because its movement is quite slow and gradual. And that means that this tool, if used properly, can be read well within one thousandths of an inch. And with its vernier scale, in this case, we can really get down to a couple of ten thousandths of an inch reliably. So, why the difference? Why all these micrometers? And that's it. Micrometers can be a lot more accurate. But be careful. I said they can be. It all depends on how we manipulate them. So, 
Let's take a look at the different micrometers that we have on this bench. The first thing we'll look at here is a stick mic. That's this, this little guy right here. Now, this stick mic has two contact points and it's obviously used to measure inside dimensions. Now, it has a one half inch travel and is read like any micrometer. Now, this stick mic for measuring inside diameters comes in different lengths. As it's set up here, it's for two to three inches. Actually, it's from one, two to two and a half inches. Then we have extensions for three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and so on and so forth. Now, you've already caught on. I said there's a half inch travel here, and I have one inch gaps on my extensions. That's because the contact points, once removed, can be spaced with this half inch spacer. So it actually extends my half inch travel on the mic to one inch. So in this case, with the extension in place, this is a two and a half to three inch stick mic. And so on and so forth. And since we're looking at internal measurements, here's what we would classically call an interior mic. Now I have two examples. Uh, 25 to 50 millimeter metric inside micrometer and a 0.2 to 1.2 inch uh, interior imperial micrometer and obviously that measures from anvil end to anvil end for internal measurements and staying with our inside measurements we have here what many would call a bore mic it has three contact points and these are so nice that they actually get me physically excited. These are really nice tools, very accurate. In this case, we have a 25 to 30 millimeter bore measurement possible with five thousandths of a millimeter increments. Very, very nice tool. Now, obviously, something this accurate would be useless if it wasn't calibrated very accurately. And that's why it comes with its own calibration ring. Very important to have. And then we have our depth micrometers that measure the depth from our shoulder to the point of this uh, measuring tip. Now they're read backwards and they're basically a standard micrometer. Okay, and they are made to measure depth. like that. Now, this is a one, zero, zero to one inch uh, depth micrometer. Uh, and it can be a one to two and a two to three, simply by replacing the contact point. So now we have a one to two inch depth micrometer, or we could have a two to three inch. It's that simple. Here we have a Panamic, and the Panamic has basically interchangeable anvils. Now that's really nice when you have to, as in this example, get into a thin slot. But we can have rounded anvils, pointy anvils, different diameter anvils, or large flattened anvils for softer materials. So it's a really nice tool to have, but what's really important when you're measuring grooves that makes this very nice is that when you turn the micrometer, the anvils don't turn, they stay put. So if you have a tool like this one that has a reduced anvil to get into a groove, well, you're not spinning it around. It will always be aligned with what you're trying to measure. And here's a spread of outside micrometers. I have three vernier scaled and one standard. So I have a zero to one inch uh, vernier scaled micrometer, a zero to 25 millimeter vernier scaled micrometer, a five to six inch vernier scaled micrometer, and a two to three standard micrometer. Three uh, 
Starrett and one Mitutoyo. But what's important is if I have the mics, I have tools to calibrate them. Because remember, an uncalibrated mic is useless. These are really nice tools and very accurate. It's not the kind of tools that we use every day though. And we use a micrometer when we need an accurate measurement. But if we are using one, it's because we need an accurate measurement. And that means that it should be well adjusted and read properly. So let's go take a look at how to read a micrometer and then we'll look at how to adjust it and calibrate it. A standard micrometer has two scales, a fixed scale and a rotary scale. Now, this isn't a standard micrometer, it's a vernier micrometer. So hidden from view and back here, there's a third scale, which is the vernier scale. But we'll look at that a little later. For now, let's take a closer look at the fixed scale. The fixed scale, well, is divided into 0.1 increments, which in turn are divided into 0 0.025 increments. Or if you prefer, each line along this scale, regardless of the length of the line, is worth 25 thousandths of an inch. So if I start from the zero, I can see zero, 25 thou, 50 thou, 75 thou, and 100 thou, or if you prefer, 0.1 inch. 0 0.125, 0 0.150, 0 0.175, 0 0.2, and so on right up to one inch because the amplitude of movement on this micrometer, as on most micrometers, is one inch. Obviously, imperial micrometers. Now, we call this scale the fixed scale because it's fixed. Are you writing this down? This is gold here. Our second scale, the rotary scale, well, it's called a rotary scale because it rotates, like I said, incredible stuff. But more important than that is to say that it has 25 divisions and each division represents one thousandths of an inch. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to 24 and coming back to zero is 25. Now remember that the divisions on the fixed scale was 25 thou per line. One turn of the rotary scale is also 25 thou. So we should fully expect that if we turn one complete rotation on the rotary scale, we'll advance or back off by one line on our fixed scale. Reading a standard micrometer is a two-step operation. First step, read the fixed scale from the first zero right up to the edge of the rotary scale. Count all the complete divisions. Don't count any partial divisions. Look at all the complete divisions and note down your answer. Add to that first reading the number of thousandths of an inch that appear on the rotary scale at the point where the main line of the fixed scale intersects the rotary scale. Add those up and you have your reading. It's just that simple. Okay, so in this example I can see 0.3 plus 3 full divisions up to the edge of the rotary scale. So 0.375 plus what I have on my rotary scale and in this case I have 0 because that's the line that lines up with the main line of the fixed scale. So 0.3 and 3 divisions, 0.375 plus 0, this is 0.375, what we recognize as being 3 eighths of an inch. Now, if I turn the scale back by one line, I'm one line before 0.375, so I would read 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.325, 0 0.350. I don't see a complete division, so I don't add that division, but I come over to my rotary scale 
and I note that I'm on line 24. So 0.350 plus 0 0.24, 0 0.374. If I would go one division past my zero, well, I'd have 0 0.375 plus 1, 0 0.376. So if that's 0 0.376 and I'd go up to here, I'm at my fifth division past 0 0.375, 380. 385, 390, 395, and 0.4. It really is just that simple. Well, that's great. If you're working in thousandths of an inch, that's all you need to know. But if you wish to get dimensions that are a little more accurate, let's say we go here and I'm in between two lines, and I read here 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.425 plus four thousandths of an inch, so 0 0.429, plus obviously a little bit, there's something missing. Well, if we want to know that little bit, we should go over on the back side here and take a look at our vernier scale. So let's go over to the other side and take a look. Now, here's the back side of my micrometer, and I can see that I have 10 lines that run the length of the micrometer body here, and each one of those lines represents one ten thousandths of an inch. Now, to read this scale, all I have to do is add to what I've read previously, which is 0.429 thousandths of an inch, this number in ten thousandths. Now I'm looking for a line here that lines up perfectly or as perfectly as possible with any line on the rotary scale. And if I look here, it's not obvious because of the camera angle, but it's the line number five. That's five ten thousandths of an inch. So that means that my measurement is actually 0.429 thousandths of an inch and five tenths. So 0.4295, but remember in the shop we'd say 429 thou and 5 tenths. And again, it's just that simple. The metric micrometers aren't any different. They're read in the same way. It's just that the divisions change. So in this example, I have a 0 to 25 millimeter, which is the equivalent of a 0 to 1 inch mic. So 0 to 25 millimeter with a fixed scale that has divisions that are divided into half millimeters and a rotary scale that has 50 divisions of 0 0.01 millimeters. So one full turn of the rotary scale equals half a millimeter or if you prefer one division on the fixed scale. So on this metric micrometer I can see here that my scale is divided into half millimeters. The fixed scale. So I go 0 0.5, 1 millimeters, 1.5 millimeters, 2 millimeters, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and finally 5. Now I can see that I'm past the 5 by one full line, so that's 6 millimeters, but I'm a little past that line and I can see that I'm on the 0 of my rotary scale, and I can just see half of the bottom line. So I'm actually at 5, 6.5 millimeters. 6.5 millimeters on my fixed scale. Now on that fixed scale I'm going to add what I have on my rotary scale. And in this example I have nothing. I'm on zero. So this is 6.5 millimeters. Now if I move this out a little bit, let's say that we go here. Okay, that looks lined up here on the 10. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have 5, 6, 7, and 8. 5, 6, 7, 8, and a little bit, because I'm just at the start of that top line, just a little past its center. So I'm actually a little further than 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm at uh, eight something. Am I at eight and a half? No, the bottom line doesn't appear at all. 
So I'm before 8.5, but I'm after 8. And if I look, I'm at 8.1. This uh, line here, this 10, indicates 0.1 millimeters. If it was one line after that 10, well, I'd have 0.11, so 8.11 millimeters, because each small line on the rotary scale here represents one one hundredth of a millimeter. So if I go to the 5 here, I'm at 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, and there's 50 divisions, so once I get right up to the zero on the next one, I'm at 8.5 with my bottom line. Now, if I end up, like it's the case here, between two lines on my rotary scale, and I want that thousandths of a millimeter, well, I can't get it. But the uh, vernier scale on this metric micrometer will give me uh, plus or minus or a point uh, or a two thousandths of a millimeter, because each division on the vernier scale here is equal to 0 0.002 millimeters. So let's go over to the other side and take a look at that vernier scale. So we're at the back of the micrometer now, and we can see that we have five lines in our vernier scale, each one representing two thousandths of a millimeter. So I have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Uh, now, that being said, again, I need to look for a line on my rotary scale that lines up with one of the lines of my uh, fixed vernier scale here. Now, the line that lines up on the vernier scale will be the number of thousandths of a millimeters that I'll add to my other uh, answer that I, that I obtained already. So if I look here, I know that I was just past the line, so it's going to be one of the first lines, and really it's the number two line here that lines up best with any line on the rotary scale. So that's two thousandths of a millimeter. And that means that I had 0.851 uh, millimeters, no, 8.51 millimeters, sorry about that, 8.51 millimeters plus two thousandths of a millimeter. So, 8.512 millimeters. Now, reading a micrometer is important, but it's only part of the equation. If you're going to use a micrometer, it has to be calibrated. And not just calibrated in any way, it has to be calibrated for you. So, that's very important. And also, you have to manipulate the tool properly. So, let's take a look at micrometer calibration. If you're going to use a micrometer, you have to learn how to hold it. And there's really two ways of holding a micrometer. One that frees up a hand and one that uses both. Which means that your part being measured has to be stabilized. Now, this is the one-handed approach. And let's take a look at that. With this one-handed method, we have one finger to hold the tool. One finger to stabilize it. Two fingers for the lock action and two fingers to activate the thimble. That frees up my other hand to hold the part. This is obviously used when measuring small parts. The other method is a two-handed approach and it's used when I have a stable part. That frees up both hands for measuring and permits the use of the ratchet stop. Another thing you need to know is that this is not a C-clamp. It's not made to clamp down forcefully onto your part. You have to apply a light pressure, making sure that you have a good contact with your part. And each time you measure, you want to apply that same pressure. So practice using the micrometer. And remember, and this is mostly for the guys out there, and when you were a little, little boy, your mom probably told you, shake it to get the last drop. Well, with the micrometer, we're going to shake it. But not to get the last drop, and not at the end. We're going to shake it before the end. Just a slight shake to make sure that you have a good contact. And then a little slide, side to side. And if you can just barely slide side to side, after you shake and tighten down with that light pressure, well, you've got it made. 
And I can see here that this general grade one to three block is one thou over in my one inch dimension. So there you go. Now you know the shake and shimmy rule. But to be careful with the shake at the end thing. Because I heard that if you shook too much at the end, you could go blind. But that's another story. Now, we've learned to read and we've learned to manipulate. Now, the third part of this equation is learning how to calibrate. So let's take a look at that. Three things can be adjusted on my micrometer. And the first, well, is the tension required to spin the thimble. And to adjust that tension, I'm going to back the thimble off until I just see the pressure adjustment nut appear, just at the back here, but not enough so that the thimble comes right out. Then, using the hook wrench provided, I'm going to tighten until I just snug up the thimble. There we go. Now that is just tight, but that's more friction than I want. So I go a little too tight and then I just barely back it off. So let me find that hole for my hook wrench here. There it is. And now I'm going to quite lightly just back off there. And that's a nice tension. That's the way I like the tension to be. For my micrometer. Now to adjust the scale on the micrometer I'm going to have to adjust the barrel of the micrometer here and for that I'm going to use a gauge of some sort and in this case I have a 20 millimeter gauge block that I'm going to shake just a little. That's the proper tension for what I like to use and I can see right here that I'm over by a little bit and I'm going to use my hook wrench to adjust the barrel. But before I do that, I'm going to lock the micrometer. And now I can adjust this here. All I have to do is find the little hook hole and come back very lightly to line up the main line of my fixed scale to the zero on the rotary scale at 20 millimeters. And there you go. It's just that simple. The third thing that we can adjust on our micrometer is the thimble placement itself, okay, where it lines up. And right now, I have a nice adjustment where I'm on zero and everything is fine. But sometimes the main line on my fixed scale ends up underneath or at an odd place because my thimble is poorly installed. Or maybe I would just like to have a mic that I could read with my left hand which is not always obvious. Some mics are made for lefties, but you can change any right-handed micrometer into a left-handed micrometer by flipping the thimble 180 degrees. So let's take a look at that. First, we're going to undo the ratchet stop and give it just maybe one turn, not even, and just a slight tap with a soft hammer to break the taper. What taper? Well, the taper that holds the thimble onto the micrometer right here. Okay. Now, once that's done, we can set that aside and be careful. Everything here is quite delicate. And then using our hook wrench, we can come and rotate our scale and position our line 180 degrees. So my main line is now over on this side of the micrometer. Now I can get my thimble and reposition it onto my micrometer. Line everything up, reinstall my ratchet stop, tighten down by holding the thimble, unlock, and we have a little left-handed micrometer. Now, my numbers are upside down, but they're still quite readable. And 24 stays 24, 0 stays 0, 1 stays 1. Everything is read the same way, it's just the numbers are upside down. 
I should warn you that that last operation, the thimble removal, can be a little more difficult. Sometimes the taper is seized up and those ratchet stops are pretty hard to take off sometimes and they're easily damaged. So really only do that if you have to. And if you're not sure of how to remove the ratchet stop, well, go see your dealer and he'll help you or she'll help you with the removal of that ratchet stop without damaging it. Okay, now that being said, that was Micrometers 101. I hope you enjoyed it. And to everyone, happy machining.